troops and we come. Rugby's a game for everyone. No matter what shape, size, race. Welcome to another session. Try rugby motto is far now because it brings everybody together and lets all the fun out. It gets everybody fizzed up and we just come together as one big family. I love rugby because I have amazing best friends. It's quite good because you get to meet some new people. It feels like a second family, or a third family in my case. <laughs> Try Rugby is a chance for everyone to play rugby, no matter what vulnerabilities they have or challenges they have in their life. It's an open team for everyone that can get involved in the game that a lot of us love. High School Old Boys Rugby Club, we've developed our community. We've got 30 players and we've got a range from 12 to 50. You've got to start at club level and then build right to that top echelon. I know a few of the players have a dream of wearing a Tri Rugby black jersey and, hey, I hope we can make that happen. <laughs> I'm Jamie Livingstone. I'm the Rugby Director at High School Old Boys Rugby Club in Christchurch. My involvement in Tri Rugby is one of the leaders of the programme and also assists with the, the coaching. Here we go, come on nice and close. Good stuff. Hey, welcome to another session. We're all ready to go? Yeah, tonight we're going to warm up, then we're going to do a bit of passing, yeah. then we'll get in some tackling, yeah. and then at the end, if we do all those really well, we will play a massive game. Is that cool? Yeah. Right, let's go. Warm up time. Come on, championship winning team. Let's go. Let's go. Try rugby gives them an avenue to be part of a, a real rugby club. So as soon as they cross the white line, they are rugby players. Here we go, let's see it, Paulie, off we go. That's it, here we go. We've gone from about 10 players and then we were getting more and more people each week and now we've got enough players to fill up a team in Christchurch. No forward passes, eh? My name is Brendan, I'm 20, turning 21 later in the year. I would like to see more people with disabilities get into mainstream sports. We could see it happen more often. Why I love rugby? Um, growing up, I just felt like I really wanted to play rugby, wanted to learn more about rugby. My disability is fetal alcohol syndrome that causes brain damage, a little bit of autism. On the spectrum, I'm near Albert Einstein, which people didn't know that Albert Einstein had autism. That's why he was so smart. Yeah, and I also have tremors. Well, of course, the Crusaders are on top. Blues are second. No offence to the Blues, but the Crusaders are the best team in Super Rugby. I said at the start of the season that the Blues could have been the only team to beat the Crusaders, but I don't see that now because they haven't lost two straight matches since about 2018-19. It's hard to beat beat the Crusaders consistently. And it's hard to beat the Crusaders at home. It's a fortress. And they're the reigning champions. Brendan was one of the four originals of the Tri Rugby. He has a fantastic knowledge around rugby. He has a very strong opinion of it. Um, but I think his dream all his life was to play rugby, and I think now he's got that opportunity, which is great. Rugby is one of the things in my schedule that I'm like, I don't want to miss it. I don't want to miss it. <laughs> Let's go, run, pass, good. 
Go, Mark! We're trying to impart as much rugby knowledge onto our try rugby pass as possible. Go, run! So that's from our run catch pass through to our tackle, through into our breakdown, and then sort of trying to introduce a, a bit more free flowing game. Here we go! Oh, Sly, stop it! Our try rugby players are really welcoming, and it's something I think we as a club can learn around the inclusiveness that these try players are, are demonstrating. There we go! And you, Brendan! Hands up, Brendan! We have got you know, a couple of leaders, self appointed leaders, who get involved. There we go! Yep. Oh, Brad, all the way through! Nice! Oh, I have been to every single training. I've turned up on time, and I'm always getting the boys fizzed up on a Wednesday night. I'm Bradley, and I am the captain of the Tri Rugby team. Everybody calls me the meter reader, which means I took away the meters, but then leaves it open for someone to score. Nice, Bradley, and give. Look at that. Professional. I call him my, my meters man. Um, if we're thinking technically, he, he takes it straight up the guts. A good prop forward. But he's also really encouraging to people who might not get the opportunities looking to get them involved the whole time. I have Prada Willy syndrome. It's a deletion of the 15th chromosome. Basically, it means I love food. <laughs> Put that in a nutshell. Looking forward to practice tomorrow night. Cheers, Linda. How's that? The prada willi syndrome is a multifaceted syndrome, so it's components of intellectual disability, um, an insatiable appetite, and there can be some sort of psychotic mental health sort of issues that run along with it. So it has a huge impact. I mean, food is such a big part of our life, and Bradley doesn't need to eat as much as what we do, and he always feels hungry. Getting quite dark now at practice, isn't it? But that's the love of it, though. Oh, is it? Which ones do you think Jamie would like to see? That one. Yep. And the team one. Bradley has always loved rugby, following it, and now being able to play it as well. He's very proud captain of the High School of Boys Tri Team. Always introduces himself to new players and just enjoys that whole culture of doing something that everybody else does, just being part of the community. He was the first guy that came to our AGM and he spoke on behalf of Tri Rugby and introduced himself around 30 people of our club. So he's, uh, he's, he's the, the man out front, just loves rugby even though he's a Hurricane supporter. Okay, come in here a bit closer. A lot of the players are quite shy and Tri Rugby gives them probably more confidence and it gives me the enjoyment of seeing them grow. Okay, you go over that one there, Nick. It's all good, let's get you involved. I think the whole team does have that passion for rugby, but is like scared that they'll never be able to play rugby because different aspects of 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 them. Kick off! Go! Try gives them the opportunity to be able to play a sport that they love and not being turned away and saying, oh, nah, sorry, we can't. Go, April! It was amazing to get tackled by my friends and I get to spare tackle them, get the best crew and best captains and best coaches. Yeah, my whole face is going solid numb. I wanted to do something different. My name is April. I'm four, no, 18, nearly 19. I love rugby because I have amazing best friends. Hey, that one's greasy. April came to live with us when she was three and a half. Yeah. She's a foster child, but she's been with us forever. Okay, is there some soap in there? Yeah. Right, do you I want to show you, Mum? Get out! Get out! <laughs> when April came to live with us, True. we were told that she had some learning disabilities and she had ADHD. Well done. My hands are all greasy. And we'll go and wash them then. <laughs> when she was 14, she was given an IQ test which okay. indicated that actually she had an intellectual disability. So unfortunately for April, it did mean that she'd um, missed out on a lot of the critical periods. April, have you fed Napoleon today? No. Do you want 
Jeepers. OK, those... Is that stale? Yes. OK. Oh, here he is, Mum. OK, call out to him. Polia! You want bread? She's a live wire, April, and she she likes people. <laughs> she doesn't always read people particularly well, and it's more, I think, sometimes about how the community treat April than how April functions in the community. You missed that one, mate. That's my pig, Napoleon. My daddy bought him for me. I guess we felt that we had something to offer to a foster child, but we were more interested in something that was going to be longer term. Napoleon, off the deck. We actually thought that we'd be able to offer something to a quiet sort of school-aged child, but things have a way of working out. Not my foot. Can't eat my foot. It's um, a bit of a different sort of household, but equally families come in all shapes and sizes, and that's the nature of ours. Yeah, I can snob it all over me, Mum. A pig special, eh, Mum? You see? Yeah, my special pig. He likes you, April. He knows you're his mother or whatever you are to him, his big sister, who feeds him. <laughs> They're adorable. Stay in that! Good yards. Integrity, it's turning up to training and turning up to the game. And if you don't, well, you know, you're letting your, your team down. Good work, team. Good passing. Yeah. They've each got challenges themselves, but they also understand that uh, other people have got the same sort of challenges, and I think that's that's quite key. Let it go, Brendan. Brendan, you're on the ground, so you got to stand up first. It's taught me how to respect people more, where I've come from, and all that. I respect all the players in in the team. You got to chat with other players and you've got to push them ahead and tell them you can do this. That's a team player. Hey, mate. Hi. How you doing? Good. Nice to see you. Me and Pauline are the same ones <laughs> in the family. You organised your grocery list? First done it off with Pauline around the time after my 10th birthday. We said, why don't we do some respite nights? And then decided that I would crash there full time. We've got plenty of cheese. But right now, I live here and in my flat. What else do you need? We first got Brendan when he was 10, and we fostered him through SIFS. He arrived at our home with a rubbish bag of dirty small clothes and a shoebox full of broken McDonald's toys. Remember, I'm going to the rugby. Oh, you are too. There's two sides to Brendan. The daily living skills, um, quite low for his age, but his intelligence level on some of the subjects that he really enjoys just blows you away. And how's your bedroom looking? Pretty good. <laughs> you cleaned your bathroom? Yep. I see you've had a shave, that's good. It's been a real learning journey for both of us. Try turmeric latte. Oh, well, give that a go. <laughs> his disability really impacted on his younger years. He struggled at mainstream school, got teased a lot, and anger was a big issue with him. But the more he started to play rugby, he gained more confidence. How long does it take you to get to work? That led to him feeling more confident out of the community. He's just one bus now, mate. Yeah. He just, he'd come home and he'd just be beaming because he'd actually played rugby and forming other friendships and relationships. How do you drink this? <laughs> Ugh. <laughs> Back in my teenage years, I wasn't in the best space and couldn't control my anger. Now with rugby training, I've learned more about self-discipline. I use my anger differently. I use my rage to fire me up and play. Go in, bring the ball! 
Cam, bring the ball. Self-discipline's really key, and we drive that into our premier men's and women's players. And now these tri rugby players are self-responsible rugby players. They've got to make sure they've got their mouth guards, otherwise they can't participate. They've got to make sure they're wearing boots and you know wearing their uniforms. So we are really giving them a self-responsibility to drive how they act as rugby players. To be able to have discipline, I've got to kind of get up, get ready for work, and also I've got to pack my gear the night before so that I have it. So as soon as I leave work, I go straight down to practice. If I don't have my stuff, I can't play rugby, so it's like, yeah. I work at Kilmarnock Enterprises. I'm pretty much a man that can do everything. But my main job, which actually I love, is um, e-waste. Because e-waste has been able to save the environment so that electronics don't end up in landfill. I've been working here for just over 15 years. Five days a week, 80 hours a day. Keeps me busy, keeps me out of trouble. It keeps my brain ticking over. I always think that I'm winning every day. I'm always happy, full of energy. I'll try to be. Just imagine on your most hungriest day, that's the way that his body is every day, all day. So he has times when he really manages it really well and then other times when he doesn't. And often that's because the world around him may not be able to support him. But in saying that, being able to be part of working, being part of the community by playing rugby enables him to lead a great life. Okay, Paul, you're right. Up we come. Hey, you're right. Rugby has taught me lots of skills. Passing, tackling. Good tackle, eh, Paul? Get him down. I like to stay strong, but we need more girls to play. That's tricky, this picture. That's lots of thinking. Hey, Mum. What was that, Dylan? This is a lot of thinking. Yeah. April uses words like her brain gets muddled and sometimes she says she's got a small brain. I'm not sure where that came from, but some people can be pretty harsh and judging. Particularly when someone's loud, they think that it's all about them being naughty rather than it's actually that maybe they haven't understood, maybe they got given a whole series of instructions and could only remember the first thing. So, you know, there's all sorts of little tricks to really uh, helping April succeed. You have to focus and find the right colours to go together. It takes so much patience to try and do this. It is so hard. She knows that she's got a disability, but it sort of, in some ways, doesn't really stop her. You've got a job to do. You can help, Mum. You'll pick your job, April. No way in hell it's my job, Mum. Yes? That's a disturbing, Mum. Jesus! Pig, do you want to try and poop? There's some all around up here too. Jesus, how many body poo does he do every day? Mum, is too many. Damn, pig! Oh, OK, grumps. OK, and Polly and grumpy butt. And over it goes. Boom. Just like that. Mum? Mm. That's your dinner for tonight? Mm, yeah. I would like to see Tri Rugby Gimp incorporated more with rugby clubs so we can go from club rugby to provincial rugby to international rugby and build up teams, see if we can go overseas so more countries look at people with disabilities and we can think that's a good idea. Why can't we do that here? Come on, Brendan, let's go. Maybe in like 30 years or so from now, we might have a, a tri-rugby World Cup. 
Get out of it, Bradley. Offside. Go, Ken. Go, Ken. You know, you've got the All Blacks who are really successful, but you know, everyone's outside playing, and we just get amongst it. That's how it sort of, I think, develops. Well, then Canterbury would be great if Canterbury Rugby jumped on board and really promoted a try rugby to other clubs. And then the same at New Zealand rugby level. This is a fantastic opportunity for the higher organisations to really get involved and make sure rugby is available for everyone. It was quite difficult because she'd been mainstreamed at school. Really, it got to year 12 and there wasn't anything further for April to do. What do you do, It was at that point that we started to look at options for her and we got into some day programmes in the disability sector, one of them being Helen Anderson, which is where she started doing the rugby. But, oh, Lars, you can do better than that. <laughs> That's special, kind and caring and that support me. <laughs> Working with everyone makes me happy. So you mean to kick it over the goal pond? Excited and proud. Watch out, Dion. You might get a ball to the face. I like throwing the ball to everybody so that no one misses out of having a turn. Good over. One of the effects of playing a team sport has been she's got friends. That's the big thing. Go, Dee. There you go. There's a lot of reward in being part of a group that's working towards a common goal. That actually, if your team wins, you win. That type of learning has been really good for her. Boza! Yeah, turn around, turn around. Stop it, stop it. Chase. On the field, you know, you play it at your best, you give it 100%, but also at the end of the game, it's the ability to, no matter what's happened on the field, to shake hands, walk over to the changing sheds and come back to the club rooms and, and, and have a lemonade. Listen up, listen up. Real awesome training tonight. And we're doing some good tackling, some good running and some good support. But most importantly, we're picking each other up off the ground, which is really, really cool, right? Rugby's given me the confidence to be able to be a good role model, I guess. I just love being around my team. Don't crack it, Bradley. <laughs> now that she's in that disability community, it's really enriched her life. You can see that she feels like she does belong with this team. Working with everyone has taught me to try your best and go for it. They're always going to be family. He just has a grin from ear to ear whenever he's on the field, off the field, with these guys. <laughs> and it's like you got a whole lot of different brothers and sisters. That's why we call ourselves a partner. Yeah. Fire on three! One, two, three, fire! Knees are all right? You're all right when you're running, aren't you? Yeah, it's just when you need to warm up.